Welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel. In this video, I will show you how to make an amigurumi unicorn using the brand new yarn, Red Heart Amigurumi. The patterns for the amigurumi yarn have been specifically designed to use up all of the yarn in this one little tiny cake. Each cake can make up two amigurumi. You'll know what the pattern is based on what the name of each cake is. And it has a nice little picture on the front of whatever it is you're gonna make. So this one in particular is the unicorn. I know there's also some bees, there's some birds, there's some cacti, there's some flamingo. There's a lot of really fun amigurumi things you can make using just one cake of the amigurumi yarn. Now, all of those patterns that I mentioned and the yarn is available at redheart.com. The free pattern link is listed in the video description box right below this video. So make sure you click on that link and get your free pattern and follow along with me as we make this really great unicorn. While you're down there, go ahead and smash that like button as my kids say and hit subscribe so that you are up to date whenever there's a new video released and you can come over here and become a better knitter and crocheter. Okay, I'm ready to dive into this Amigurumi unicorn. This is a little bit scary for me. I'm not traditionally an Amigurumi person, but I'm ready to tackle this pattern along with you. So let's do this together. When you pick up a cake of Amigurumi, it looks like this. The first thing we have to do is separate the yarn from the cake into individual balls. All you will do is remove the wrapper from the cake. Then you will pop out the center bit and at the point where the yellow connects to the blue, I simply cut that apart and then I pulled out the blue bit. Then where the blue connected to the pink, I cut that apart and I did the same for the pink connected to the white. So now I have four individual balls of color. In each cake, you have enough yarn to make both of the amigurumi pieces that are on the cover of the yarn. So for this example, with this much yarn, I have enough to make both the all white unicorn or the pink and white unicorn. Totally my choice. In this video, I will focus on making the solid unicorn. And because it's really difficult for you to see this small yarn and the small hook, I'm gonna be using a larger yarn and hook to show you some of the more detailed stitches that you need to know in order to make this unicorn. But when you're making your own unicorn, you will use the yarn that comes directly from this cake, okay? So let's go ahead and begin with the body of the solid unicorn. To make the solid unicorn, go ahead and grab your color A, and we want to begin with an adjustable ring. Now, I make my adjustable ring by making a slip knot, but not letting the circle of my slip knot close. Right where the yarn crosses over in my slip knot, I will actually pinch that crossover so it doesn't go anywhere, and I use my finger to kind of keep um, a that space open, okay? So this is the loop that would go on my hook. I will go ahead and place that directly onto my hook and I will start off with a chain one. I'm just getting my yarn in my hand correctly. I start with the chain one, okay? You can see the crossover is still right there. Here is the adjustable ring. We want to place six single crochets into this ring. So I'm placing my hook directly into the ring, yarning over, pulling up a loop, Okay, you want to make sure that your loops are the same size as your hook. Yarn over and draw through two. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we've done six single crochets. Now we want to join to form a ring and work in continuous rounds. So what you will do is this tail here that we left, you're going to go ahead and give that a nice little tug and that's going to close up that loop, that adjustable ring that we've been working into. And then if you kind of rotate your work a little bit, you'll be able to get to that very first single crochet that we made. Now that we've closed the adjustable ring, it's time for us to work in the round by working a spiral. 
In the pattern, you'll notice that the designer wants us to add a stitch marker into the last stitch we created so that way we know that is the end of the round. I typically add it to the first stitch of the round, but it doesn't really matter. I will follow the instructions as the designer wrote it. So the last stitch of the round is right there. Now, working into each single crochet around, I'm going to place two single crochets so that way I get an increase here. I'm going to come over here and working through both loops. So I have a loop right there. And it's hard to get into. Sometimes I'll use my hook to get into it. And then the back loop. So you want to make sure you have the front loop and the back loop. We're going to just jump right in with a single crochet. Okay, so there's one, and then I'm going to put one more into that same single crochet. Make sure my stitches aren't getting too big, and I have two. Go to the next single crochet, there's one, there's two. The next, there's one, there's two. There's one, there's two. There's one, there's two. I'm to the last stitch, so I'm gonna go ahead. I will remove my marker. I'll place my two single crochets into the stitch. There's one, there's two. I'm gonna place my marker into the one I just finished and I'm placing it into that V right behind my hook. That's, so that signifies the last stitch of that round. And we have just finished round two. For round three, we will place a single crochet in the first one and then two in the second, one in the third, two in the fourth, so on and so forth. And we will get a total of 18 single crochets. So we will go into this first one here and we will place one, go into the next and we'll place two. One, and then two. When I finish that second one, I want to make sure I put my marker back in to that stitch I just completed, so that way I know that's the end of my round. So that just completed round three. On round four, we want to single crochet in the next eight stitches, and then we'll do two stitches, and then we'll do eight stitches, and then two stitches, okay? So we will do eight to begin with. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then two single crochet into the same stitch. And then we do that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then we'll put two into this marked stitch. One and two. Make sure you add that marker. It's really important you add that marker because you need to know where the end of your round is. Rounds five through 13 are simply single crochet rounds. So you're gonna single crochet around and around and around and around, continuing to move your stitch marker up through round 13. I do recommend getting yourself a post-it note and a pencil so that way you can keep track of how many rounds you have completed or at least use your pencil on your pattern if you have it printed out to mark off how many rounds you've done. It just makes it really easier if you just do a tick mark every time you complete a round. Let's go ahead and get through round 13. All right, so I am right here. This is the last stitch of my row 13. So I can mark that off. That's my row 13. Move my marker. And you'll notice that now in the pattern, it says that we should begin stuffing this as we work the next few rounds, okay? Because we want to make sure that the stuffing is in here before we pull this closed. 
The other thing I'm gonna mention here is that I think it's important to weave in our starting tail at this point as well. It just makes it easier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm flipping this the opposite direction so that I can get to the starting tail and make sure it's pulled nice and closed. And then I'm going to use my bent tip tapestry needle here. And you will use your needle on the amigurumi yarn to be able to get through all the stitches. And it will be, it will be just like this. To make sure that your adjustable ring doesn't come undone, you cannot just simply go round and round and round just like your ring is, okay, just like this it's important that you close the actual stitches. So what I'm doing is I'm going through the stitch, pulling it up. I'm gonna come over here, and just as if I'm making a figure eight, I'm gonna pop this through these stitches, and I'm actually going through stitches here. And then I'm gonna come back up here where I started. See how I get that figure eight? It came around and it comes back up that's really gonna close the tip of that really well. And it's gonna make it so that your adjustable ring doesn't come undone. And I'm just weaving in my tail now just for extra security, just to make sure it's all in place. And I am confident in the way that looks at this point. I could snip it and be done. Okay, so now that that is all woven in, perfect. We can put this back right side out. See how nice and closed that is. It's still very pretty and you're ready to carry on, okay? So we wanna go ahead and take our filler. So I'm using polyfill right here, and I guess I just have to pop it open. So let's just pop it open. I didn't know if maybe I had a special opening bit or not. I'm just gonna pull some out, and you wanna fill it up enough so that it fills the piece, but not so full that it starts poking through the holes, okay? So there we go, I think that's a pretty good amount. You can see there, it's just filling it in nice and neat. And then as I work each of the next rounds, I'll add more polyfill to make sure that it's nice and full before I pull the whole thing completely closed. So now we're ready to move on to round 14. You can see here, I extended that loop so that way it didn't fall off, but I'm gonna pull it back into shape now and carry on with my round 14, which is single crochet eight and then single crochet two together. And we'll do that twice. So I'm gonna go into eight stitches here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And now I'm gonna do a single crochet two together. So I'm gonna take my hook, I'm gonna go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. Then I'm gonna go to one stitch over from that one, insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. So I have three loops on my hook. I will now yarn over and draw through all three loops on my hook. So I've just taken two stitches and made them into one. I guess I can move my post-it note out of the way now, huh? You guys don't need to see all of that. And now I wanna do that all one more time. So I'm going to single crochet eight stitches. So there's one and two and three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And now I'm gonna single crochet two together. And this will join these two stitches and make them into one. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove my marker. I'm gonna go into the next stitch, insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. Go to the next stitch, insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop and then yarn over and draw through all three loops. Now, at the finish of that single crochet two together, I am left with a V at the top of the stitch, just like always, and that's where I will place my marker to signify that's the end of my round, okay? So that's the end of round 14. I could add some more stuffing right now if I want to. I'm gonna do one more round before I add some more stuffing. So let's go ahead and go to round 15. And this one, I will single crochet in one stitch. 
and then single crochet two together over the next two stitches. So I will go in to one, go into the next, and then bring those together. And I will do that all the way around. So I'll single crochet into one, and then single crochet two together over the next two. Single crochet into one, and then single crochet two together. Single crochet into one, and then single crochet two together. And one, and then two together. So this is where I want to go ahead, remove my marker, do my two together. And that's the end of my round 15. I am gonna go ahead and extend that loop out a little bit. Let's go ahead and mark that last stitch so that we know what the last stitch of the round is. And I'm gonna fill up the body of my unicorn to the brim right now because there's only one more round left. And after that round, it's all cinched up close, so I won't be able to get any more stuffing in there. So I wanna make sure I'm adding all the stuffing I want at this point. So let's go ahead and grab, grab some more. And I'm not exactly sure how much. It's all kind of a guessing game, guys. It's very, it's very um, customizable here for you. So you can put in as little or as much as you want. Depends on how solid you want your unicorn. Mm, I feel like I need some right there. It's just kind of a, a dead spot in there. I want to say, maybe not that much. Let me take off some of that. Make sure it's all even. Yeah, that looks good to me. Yeah, all right, so I'll put that back. <laughs> all right, so one more round. This is going to be the round that closes it all up. So let's put our hook into this, do round 16. Round 16 is we will single crochet in the next stitch and then single crochet two together all the way around. So it's just like round 15. It's a little bit tricky to hold this now and hold my yarn at the same time. Let's see, and I wanna make sure I don't get my polyfill as I'm crocheting. So let's do, this is my first single. And then I want to do my single crochet two together. Remember, you want to keep these stitches nice and snug so that way your toy does not fall apart and the stuffing comes out. You don't want that stuffing to come out. And there's my two together. Oops. And my single. And my two together. So there's one. And two, and then one, and then two. So this last one here, take my stitch marker out, maybe, there we go. And I need to finish my single crochet two together here and give that a pull, okay? So I have eight single crochets remaining here. What I wanna do is I wanna fasten off leaving a nice long tail. And the reason you wanna leave a long tail is because you're gonna use that tail to uh, do any sort of sewing together for the body and whatever else it may be. So I'm leaving a nice long tail and I'm just finishing off my work, okay? So this tail, I will use it for sewing. You see? Now, if we had not sewn or woven in that end there, we would go back and weave it in right now, but we don't need to do that because we've already done that. Yes, this leaves a little bit of an opening right there, but that's okay. We can seam that close as necessary with the tail. But at this point, the body portion of my unicorn is complete. Now we're gonna move on to the solid unicorn head. The solid unicorn head starts at the muzzle and we begin with an adjustable ring again. So make sure you start off with your adjustable ring right like so. And I like to start off with the chain one. 
We want to begin by working six single crochets into the ring, just like we did before. Once you have all six, go ahead and give that tail a tug to close the ring. Once you pull that adjustable ring closed, it's time to work in spirals once again. So you're gonna need that stitch marker. Make sure you place the stitch marker in the last stitch of that round. Alrighty, and then we will continue on. We're going to work in continuous rounds following the instructions through round 12. Because I've already walked you through how to do these increases on the body, we have a couple extra increases on the head that we will work, but it's mainly the same thing. So go ahead and take a look at that free pattern and work through round 12. Meet me back here for round 13, because that's when we're going to add the safety eyes to our unicorn. I just finished my round 12 and beginning round 13 and we're going to do some shaping here on round 13 similarly to what we did on the body itself as well. So here we go. We will single crochet in the first single crochet and then we are going to single crochet in the next single crochet and then we will single crochet two together. So there is my single crochet two together right there. And we will do that six times. So that was one, Remember to place your marker in that stitch that was created and then go ahead and extend your loop up because at this point we want to weave in the tail at this part just like we did on the body but we're also going to add our safety eyes at this point. So I've got my safety eyes right here and the instructions say we're supposed to add our safety eyes between rounds eight and nine. So let's look here. We have round 13 on the, that last round. So there's 13, there's 12, 11, 10. And so this would be round nine. So we want to add our safety eyes somewhere around here. So I'm going to put an eye right there. And this is a safety eye right here. I do want to remind you that if you're making this for a three-year-old or younger, you should embroider the eyes on. Don't use safety eyes. So I'm going to puncture this fabric. Whoops, I dropped one of them. I'll have to pick it up here in a second. Puncture the fabric with the safety eye. Okay, so it's all the way through. And I can see here on the opposite side, you see how there's ridges on the safety eye? The cap right here, it's a plastic cap. You want to place the cap on and you should hear clicking. Let's see if we can... You can't hear it, I can feel the clicking. And it's just clicked into place and it's not budging, like this is, it's in place. You see that? See how the safety eye is in place now, okay? Now the instructions say that you're supposed to count 10 stitches over and add the other eye. So I will do that as well. Gotta pick up my eye real quick. All right, so we have one eye added. We wanna add the other eye and we want it on the opposite side of the head. So the designer says to count across 10 stitches, you can do that or you could just eyeball it, ha ha, and figure out where you wanna place it as well. So I'm gonna just stick it in at that point and let's take a look. So that one, I actually kinda like it right there. So I'm gonna stick with it right there. I punctured it into the crocheted fabric flip it over, grab my cap, and then push the cap on. Okay, it's nice and snug, it's not gonna come undone, and now I have my safety eyes in place for the unicorn. When we're done, we'll do the embroidery for the nose and the mouth, but the safety eyes are all done. So we can go ahead and begin to stuff this, okay? So I'm gonna grab stuffing, just like we did with the body, begin stuffing this. And then we would just go ahead and continue on and decrease down very similarly to what we did on the body. So let me get this stuffed and get this head brought down to the end. 
Once you've brought all the stitches down to the final circle, you want to leave yourself a nice long tail once again. Go ahead and finish off that work. Give it a close. And it's all right that that's open. We will seam that close later. But this right here, what you're looking at, that is the unicorn's head. So we have the head complete now. So I have a body and a head. <laughs> Now that we have a body and the head, we need to make the neck of the unicorn. It's really easy, only this time, instead of working single crochets in spirals, we're going to join them to work in the round with a slip stitch. It's fairly simple, but let me show you how to do that now. For the neck of the unicorn, you begin with a simple slip knot, but you wanna make sure you leave a nice long tail so that way you can sew the neck to the head. Now that's kind of probably too much of a tail, but hey, I'd rather err on the side of too much than too few. Once you have that slip knot on your hook, go ahead and chain 14. Once you've chained 14, we're going to join to the first chain of this set with a slip stitch, and you wanna be careful not to twist your chain. Okay, so make sure you can see all of those V stitches or the V, I shouldn't call it a V stitch, like the V at the top of the chains, so that way you know it's not twisted, and we're joining with a slip stitch. Now I'm going to chain one, and I will single crochet in the same chain that I joined with the slip stitch into, and now I'll single crochet in each chain all the way around. At the end of this round, I'll have 14 single crochets. All right, so I'm at the end of my round. Once again, I wanna make sure I have not twisted anything. And I'm going to join with a slip stitch to the very first single crochet I created. So I go into that stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then pull that loop through. The next two rounds are gonna be identical to one another. We will chain one, single crochet in that first stitch where we did the join, and then we'll single crochet in each stitch all the way around. We're essentially just crocheting a single crochet circle with three rounds. And at the end of each round, we're joining with a slip stitch instead of just continuing on like a giant spiral. Once you get to the end of round three, go ahead and fasten off your work, leaving a nice long tail, and we'll move on to the legs. All right, so my neck is complete. So, so far we have created a body. Let's see here, we have a body, a neck, and a head. <laughs> That's our unicorn so far. The next step is to start to make the little legs of the unicorn, so let's jump in. You wanna make four little tiny legs for this really cute unicorn. And we're gonna start with color C, which is on the hoof of the leg. So we begin with an adjustable ring, just like we've been doing all along. And I'm dropping down a hook size for my sample here because um, I want these legs to be nice and tight. And of course, I'm using larger yarn, remember, so I'm dropping down a hook size. You shouldn't need to do that. You should be able to use the same hook sizes you've been using all along if you're using the Amagurumi yarn. For this hoof, oh, I've already messed up, huh? I've already put that slip knot on there. I want to start with an adjustable ring. So let's start with an adjustable ring here and do a chain one. We begin by placing six single crochets into that adjustable ring. We already know how that works. I'm going to mark the first single crochet just so I know what I wanna work into here. When I come back around, let me just zip that, okay. And then I'm going to place all six of them. So that was two, three, four, five, and six. Once you have all six of those single crochets made, go ahead and give that tail a pull to have the adjustable ring closed. 
Now, we're going to do one more round with our color C, and this round is just a full round of single crochets. We are not going to increase like we did in the body or the head. We're just going to place a single crochet in each one of those six single crochets. When we get to the last stitch, I'm going to change to the next color as well, so that way I can get the new color or the body color on my hook. So what I'm going to do here is let's get into this first stitch. We're working in a spiral just like we did before. My stitches are tighter here. That's why I'm having a little bit of trouble getting my hook in there. Okay. So we're going to make our first stitch here. So there is my first single crochet and I'm going to mark this one. So that represents the first stitch of the round. I know that's a little bit different than what we've been doing, but it just helps me when I'm making the stitches on this leg. So I'm going to do my second and my third, fourth, fifth, oops, And then my six. This is the last stitch of my round. That is number six. And what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and remove the stitch marker. And when I go to place my next stitch into this spot, I'm going to go ahead and change colors. So uh, you can finish off your work and rejoin as written in the pattern, but I found that this works just as well. It doesn't look like it's completely ugly or anything like that, and it just was easy way for me to change to a new color. So all I'm doing here is I am going to yarn over my hook and pull up a loop with my new color yarn over and then draw through two. Okay, so I've created my first stitch. I will place my stitch marker in there. Okay, and then I will go ahead and carry on placing a single crochet in each one of the stitches. Just so you know, this is the right side. So you want to make sure that your hoof is, um, is, is in this direction. I guess that's the way to say it and then we will place six single crochets. Now, as you're making the leg of this unicorn, you're gonna carry on working in the round, just placing six single crochets through round eight. At that time, you will fasten off your work and finish it, and it will look a little bit something like this, okay? So here are three legs that are already finished. I'm gonna finish this last leg, and then once you're finished with the legs, we can go ahead and carry on, and we're gonna make the ears. They're really super easy. The only thing I wanna show you on the ears is how you're going to stitch up the back of the ear so that way you get that kind of open look as the ear is mounted on the head. So let's go ahead, finish this leg, and then we're gonna to jump to the ears. All right, once you have finished with your leg and all of the other three, so you have four total, you move on to the ears. Now the ears are very simple. You just chain seven chains and then you work single crochets all the way back around those chains. The beauty of this ear is that when it's folded, it actually resembles this really cute little ear. So from this, you're gonna get this, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. All you need to do is, as you finish the ear, you notice that you have the top of the stitches, which look like this V that I've been referring to all along. You want the V to be at the top as you fold the ear widthwise. So I want you to watch this. We can fold the ear this way, and see how that kind of makes the Vs sort of fold in towards the ear, and you can have it that way if you want, but it's better if you fold it the opposite direction where the V's now look like they're on the outside, okay? They're on the outside there. And once you fold that, go ahead and thread the tail, the one you began with, so not the one we just finished, but the tail remaining from your chains, and on the back of this fold, so it's actually the foundation chain here, we are going to seam this closed. And I'm just going through both sides of the fabric here, using the tail, and we're just going to close this up, just back here. 
okay? And what that will do is it gives us that really cool ear look. Such a simple little way to get such a really great detail. And then I'm just gonna bring my yarn back down here to the end. When it's all done, you can see I now have two little ears here that are ready to be placed on the top of the head. The next set of instructions you need to follow are for the forelock, the mane, and the tail. Those are very easy to complete. You will simply chain the multiple of chains as indicated, and then place three single crochets into each chain all the way down, starting with the second chain from hook. Now, when it comes to the tail, instead of single crochets, you're actually going to just do slip stitches all the way down. That's the way it's written in the pattern. For my unicorn, I'm actually going to make mine a corkscrew tail just like the main, so I'm going to do extras of those. But I feel like the instructions for the forelock, the main, and the tail are very simple. And you've already been doing single crochets this whole time, you shouldn't need me to show you how to do single crochets to make a corkscrew or how to do the slip stitches just all the way up some chains. So go ahead, finish those pieces, and when you're all done, come back here. We're going to learn how to assemble this really cute little unicorn. Okay, I have all of my pieces made. It looks like a hot mess, but it's time to put all of this together and we're gonna create this really great unicorn. Now, the trick with putting an amigurumi piece together is to have a little bit of finesse with it. You can't be absolutely super precise. You want to just take a look at it, put it together, take a look at it, put it together, and make sure you're, you're playing around with the pieces. Make sure they have the right look that you're going for. Now, having said that, Nancy Anderson has given us some pretty great instructions for how we can begin to place these pieces together. So we will follow along with those as closely as possible. But if you find you want to go rogue a little bit and make yours a little bit, uh, maybe your own, maybe you want to cock the head a little bit or have it up in the air a little bit more, I don't know, whatever it may be, I want you to go ahead and do that. This is your unicorn. All right, so let's put these pieces together. I still have my wrapper from the Amigurumi yarn, and so I can look at this image as my guide for constructing my unicorn. Of course, there's also an image on the pattern itself, so whichever way you want to do, um, or whichever one you want to use, go ahead and do that. We are going to begin by sewing the ears on the head. So this is my body, my neck, and my head. So let's move those out of the way. And we have our head right here. Now I gotta make sure that I have all of my stuffing in there nice and neat. And the eyes, I wanna make sure that they are even, they're right there and they are more on the top than on the bottom, that's what I want, so there's that. And let's grab the ears. I'm gonna grab one at a time. And I will go ahead and I will use this tail. You can use either one of these long tails to sew the ears on. Nancy does suggest that we sew the ears onto the head on round 14. And remember there were 15 rounds in the head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the eyes here and I'm going to just come back. And this was row 15, this is row 14, and we want the ears about three stitches apart. So um, let's see, I want those three stitches at the top of the head. So I'm gonna do one, two, three. So I'm just gonna sew the ear right here. Remember, this doesn't have to be permanent. We can move it if we want to. If I move the ear right there, let's see. See if we want that in place there. Do we like the ear right there and then put the other ear there? I think so. Once you get the first ear in place, go ahead and begin to place the second ear as well. Just as you did the first, pretty simple. Remember, it is adjustable. You can move it and be let it be however you want it to be.
Once you have the ears in place, look how cute that little thing looks. You can just tuck those ends right inside the head. And then what I'm gonna do now is using that tail on the back of the head, I'm going to stitch up closed the back of the head now. All right, so there is the head of my unicorn. Now I need to go ahead and attach the neck to the head. And Nancy has said that she suggests making the neck attached to round nine and round 14. So if you kind of figure this out, you just kind of push it on there and you want the neck to not be right underneath here like this, right? You want it to be set back towards the back like so. So once again, we will use our tails we have one tail down here from the start, one tail down here from the begin, uh, from the end, and we go ahead and just attach it to the head, and then we will attach this to the body. Okay, once you have the neck attached to the head, look how adorable it is. It's starting to actually look like something. We want to attach it to the body. So we want to figure out our placement here on the body. And luckily, Nancy Anderson once again has given us some guidelines for where we want the neck to be placed. Nancy suggests that we join the neck to round four of the body. So one, two, three, four. This is round four about there, so I'm just marking it so I know. And then she suggests that instead of having the head like this, just have it like slightly tilted, slanted, I'm not sure how to say it, but just like turned, like not straight like this. So, but just turned a little bit just to give it more character. I am going to go ahead and using this tail, so this is the other tail of the neck, I'm going to sew it directly onto the body. So here we go. As you're stitching the neck of the unicorn to the body, you wanna make sure that when you get to a point where you have a little bit of an opening, you need to fill in the neck with stuffing. And you do wanna make sure that you pack it in there pretty firmly because this neck is gonna hold up the head of your unicorn. Because I have some fluff right here and I've got a little opening happening. So I'm just gonna start pushing it in and I really want to make sure that it's nice and firm in there giving it a nice good solid neck man that's that's pretty good that was pretty easy right there do I need some more mm. no maybe just a little tiny bit more not a whole lot and I'm still the holes big enough that I can still get my finger in there so that's good all right I think that's pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue seaming this up. Make sure that everything is looking good here. Oh my gosh, this is really starting to come together. How adorable. I'm really glad I did this with the larger yarn so you could better see on camera how this is working up. Cause I, I initially I tried to do it with the Amigurumi yarn on the camera, but I felt like you couldn't see the stitches at all with my big hands and the little tiny hook. So that's why I um, decided I would go ahead and just use some, this is Red Heart Soft yarn, and I'm just using to stitch this up and uh, make this really cute unicorn. Oh, how cute is that? Okay, so I have the neck completely sewn on. You can see right there, it's looking pretty good, and it's nice and stuffed which is awesome. And now I gotta just weave in my tail here. So I'm just gonna pierce it through a couple times. One great thing about Amigurumi is you really don't have to worry too much about your tails. As long as you 
weave them through and hide them to the inside, you're pretty good. Slippery little scissors today. Okay, so we have the head, the neck, and the body. It's time to attach the legs. Now you'll notice in the instructions that you're supposed to add a straw into each one of the legs. And I'm gonna do that now. I didn't do that at the start when we were making the legs because I didn't have a straw, but now I have a straw. So let's go ahead and apply or add the straws to the legs. So let's grab a leg here, and I have all of these strings hanging out here. So I'm just going to go ahead and snip them. I'm going to snip the strings and get rid of that. Now I'm going to grab the drinking straw, and I'm just going to push it right into the leg. Now what this is going to do is it's going to add a stabilizer to this leg. And so what I want to do is then trim the, tr the straw right down next to the leg. See that? So now I have a straw in there and it's acting as a stabilizer. And I will do that for all four of these legs. And there we go. Such a nifty little trick. Now that we have all of the legs and they all have this plastic insert, we are going to attach the legs to the body of the unicorn. The legs are surprisingly close together when you sew them on. You only want one round separating the front and the back legs. And you want the two legs on the front and the two legs on the back pretty close together. So that way the unicorn can stand up. The best thing to do at this point is to baste or to pin your legs in place and see where you want them to be. Make sure that it makes the unicorn stable and balanced and then begin to stitch them into place. That's what I'm going to do now. Okay, so this is my first time ever adding feet and we want to go round six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So somewhere around here is where so I'm gonna uh, between this marker and then she said round 10 so that's six seven eight nine ten so this marker right about there so we want to place the feet somewhere in this area and when we do so we want to make sure that they're positioned so that way it can stand up okay so let's go ahead I'm going to pin these to start. If we want, this is the dead center at the bottom. I'm guessing one right there. And let's grab another one and place this one. They said we want them to touch. So if we want that there, see how it closes and it hits there. So we would put this about there. Let me get that in there. Make sure it's all set and in place. Okay, so when those are sewn, they would be touching and roughly like so. I think that's good. And then the back ones will have it right there and then the one right next to it. So let me pin that one. And then the last one, you want to make sure that when you do sew these on, you don't want them to be just straight up and down just like this, right? They have to be separated ever so slightly so it will hold the weight. Once you have all of the legs pinned, go ahead and sew them into place. And we're nearly done with this unicorn. It is secure so I'm gonna snip my ends here oh it's exciting to get to this point let me I'm gonna just weave this one in just a little bit more 
hopefully you're having a good time with this as well and it's really starting to take shape and you're getting excited. Um, I know that's where that's where I'm at with this right now. Making sure these are nice and stable. I've gone through them several times. Let me just make sure one last time here. You can see here in the back, so that's how I did my legs. I put them that close together. I have two rows apart for mine, but the designer does suggest only one row separating the legs, but I found it looked funny for on mine, so I put them two rows apart. And uh, let's see if it stands up. Ta-da! Oh, look how cute this is so far. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Can you see that? That's where we are. Okay, so we're moving on to the next step, which is the forelock. It's that small little curly cue you made. So I did mine in this lovely little blue color right there. And so I will just snag the longer tail that I have, and I'm going to attach this between the ears on top of the head, so right up here. At this point, I'm just going to pull it in. Let's see where we are here. That's cute. And then just begin to stitch it into place. Ta-da! And we have the forelock. How cute and adorable is that so now it says to sew the main pieces to the back of the head so the back of the head here is going to be covered up with the main pieces now the main are the three little corkscrews that you made so um you see i have more corkscrews here but the three little corkscrews this is what we're gonna add to this. And it says, um, you will do the shortest on the top and the longest on the bottom. So my shortest one is the blue here. So I'm going to do that one. Let me go ahead, get these sewn into place on the back of the head, and then we can move on to the tail. Okay, I have to say, this is one of the cutest things I've ever made in my entire life. So, so far I have the main attached, the forelock attached, and the last thing to do is to attach the tail, which is exactly as we were doing these pieces. Now, I will remind you, because I'm using a different yarn, I decided that I was gonna make corkscrews for the tail, not just the slip stitches. So all you need to do is attach those slip stitches to the butt of the unicorn and you'll have a really cute tail. I have these really great corkscrews. I made a total of five and I have it, I even added the purple color in. And so what I plan on doing is I was gonna make this really elaborate and attach them right there to that bit. Once you sew the tails into place, if you're making the solid one, the only thing left to do is to embroider the mouth and the nose and add the unicorn horn. If you're making the striped unicorn, you also have to sew on the wings that you've already created as well. Now, I'm gonna go ahead, get these tails sewed on, and then I'm gonna show you how to make that really unique unicorn horn, because even I was stumped at first when I saw it. I was like, do they sell that in the kit? Did they give you the unicorn horn? No, the designer is brilliant and she used a toothpick to create the best unicorn horn. So let me get my tails on and I'll show you how to make that one next. Oh my gosh, look at this adorable unicorn I've made so far. Um, remember I did corkscrews for my tail because I had the extra yarn and I just thought it would be fun and why not, you know what I mean? I'm using bigger yarn, let's just make it a little bit different. So I used corkscrews, but everything else is just like yours. It is so adorable. If you've made the striped one, you also have wings on yours. Now it's time to add that ever important unicorn horn right there. Now, when I saw the sample of this unicorn for the very first time, I was in awe of this really super cute unicorn horn. I was like, how did she make that? Well, it's really simple. It just requires some glue, a toothpick, and some of your yarn. So let's go ahead and do this. 
Okay, I have a toothpick here and I'm going to use some E6000 glue and I'm going to put the toothpick into the glue about a, uh, let's see, about two thirds of the way down. I'm just getting it nice and coated with glue, all right? So now you wanna take your color D and color D in the amigurumi is this really bright yellow color. And I chose this really pretty gold color for color D. Now what we wanna do is we wanna wrap color D around this glued portion of the toothpick, starting from the bottom, going towards the top. And I'm just wrapping the toothpick. Of course, my yarn is a little bit thicker. Yours will be a little bit thinner and that's okay. What will happen here is the yarn should adhere to the glue portion, and then, I'm gonna just pause right here, because so I'm gonna add a little bit more glue up here to the top, not a ton, just a little bit, okay? And then I'm going to blow on the glue, so that way the tails will stay in place. And then you're supposed to trim the tails and then <laughs> add glue to the end of the toothpick that doesn't have glue on it yet and insert that into your unicorn and glue it into place. You wanna make sure it's completely dry. Once it's completely dry, that's when we will apply it to the head of our unicorn. Okay, so my unicorn horn is completely dry. I still have this tail here and I could snip it closed, but I'm actually gonna leave it long and then just tuck it into the unicorn itself. So now I'm going to apply some glue to the other end of my unicorn horn. Let's get the all glued up, there we are. And now it's the pièce de résistance. You wanna come between the ears, let's make sure I don't get glue on things, between the ears about two rows up and you want to insert the toothpick down into the head. Okay, and it will glue into place. I'm going to go ahead and just tuck this end in. So you'll notice here, you don't have to do it like I am, I just, I don't know, something about cutting an end really short like that scares me, so I'm just going to just tuck it right into the head here. If I can get it thread onto my tapestry needle. My hands are all full of glue now. I'm not typically working with glue. There we are. And so I'm just going to have this go right down next to the horn and would you look at that snip that nice and close make sure that's hidden oh my gosh <laughs> look at that adorable unicorn i have this is seriously like one of the cutest things I've ever made in my whole life. I'm gonna be honest with you. I did not think I would enjoy making this unicorn and I have loved every single minute of it. There's something about making those little tiny pieces that scared me, but watching it all come together and come out like this, has just got my creative juices flowing. I love it so much. Now let's go ahead and apply some X's at the nose and a little smiley face just to complete this look. I am using some black crochet yarn, some just, this is, this is soft yarn, I'm using the black soft yarn. If you're using the amigurumi yarn, make sure you're using black floss. I could use the black floss on this as well, but I figured, ah, eh, I've got the yarn, let's go ahead and use that. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to insert my needle right back here, and let's see, where do I want my nostrils? I think I just kinda want them 
like at this round. I guess that's round three. So I'm gonna pull this up, and come back down. And there she is, look at how adorable she is. This lovely mane and her forelock and this beautiful horn, this lovely gorgeous tail I've given her. And then look at her beautiful smile she has going on right there and her lovely eyes. I am so in love with this Amagurumi. True story, this is the very first Amagurumi I've ever made and I have loved every single minute of it. I mean, how could you not? She's so cute. We've got to name her. If you make a unicorn or any of the other beautiful Amagurumi pieces using the Red Heart Amagurumi yarn or the free patterns that come from redheart.com, I would love to see what you make. Please use hashtag MarleyBird and I'll be sure to find you on social media and I will smash your like button. I hope you have enjoyed this video and you will make your very own super duper cute unicorn. I I've, seriously, I've got to figure out a name for this one. This is so cute. I have loved making this. I hope you love making yours. Nancy Anderson, you are simply an amazing designer. I love the, all the pieces you've designed for Amagurumi yarn and the llama drama, no drama <laughs> pieces that you've made for Red Heart. It's simply beautiful. So kudos to you. What a wonderful designer you are. And all of you out there watching me here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel, I am so glad you're here. I hope you've subscribed and you've smashed that like button. I will We'll see you guys again soon. Uh, bye. <laughs> hey, thanks for joining me today on the channel. If you want more videos just like that one, check out some of these other videos that I've already handpicked for you. And don't forget to hit subscribe so that way you're up to date whenever I release a new video. And don't forget, smash that like button as my kids say. Bye guys.